Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita session. Radhe Radhe, Nitin ji, over to you. Radhe Radhe, Pallavi ji, thank you. Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening, everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful start to your weekend. Um, Friday, it's a little lighter. So today is Friday, TGIF, right? I was looking at a TGIF. This used to be a very happening concept. I was not introduced to it and un until I came to US. Mm -hmm. It doesn't reflect on how, how soon I or which year did I come, but it was a new concept for me. And now that we are reading Bhagavad Gita, I would say it's, you know, the other definition of it, Tattva Gyan is fantastic. And that's what we revise uh, pretty much every day. And uh, it's we talk about Roop Dhyan, so that is the topmost dhyan in meditation. And when it comes to knowledge, the tattva gyan is the topmost dhyan. So when we spend about an hour uh, discussing what Lord Krishna told Arjun, we are actually contemplating it and, and taking it deeper. That tattva gyan is what it is said. So with that, let's uh, welcome everybody. Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening. Let's get started with our opening prayers. All right, we'll get started with our opening prayers for the day. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwarha, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Namaha, Vasudeva Sutam Devam, Kamsa Chanur Mardanam, Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Sunil Bhai and Ajay, for the wonderful session. So let's get started with today's session. I'll just do a bit of a stop share and share my screen again so that I can pick up. Sick as well. All right. Panviji, audio is all right? Audio is perfect. Wonderful. Okay, so we will get into that. So, yeah, TGIF, Tattvagyan is fantastic. So, let's keep on revising, contemplating, and chewing upon, mulling over the Tattvagyan that we have been discussing, which Lord Krishna has been explaining to us. So today we will do the second part of the shloka that we have been doing, um, Yada Yada Hi Dharma Se, and the second part of it, we are going to do the introduction. And we are also going into the dharma aspect of it because God is laying an emphasis on dharma. So we will introduce the shloka and then obviously it will require a much deeper conversation. Maybe we will have the initial discussion around it. And also the concept of dharma with regards to the characters, some of the characters that we discussed in our previous shloka. So let's get started. Um, I can play it once again for everybody's benefit and then we will get started because the second shloka is in continuation with the first one. Yada, yada. Glanir Bhavati Bharat Abhyutthanam Adharmasya Tadatmanam Srijamyaham Paritranaya Sadhuna Vinashaya Chadushkrita all right so let's do that the second part of it and you're welcome to follow let me recite it then paritranaya sadhu naam vinashaya chadushkritam Dharma Sansthapana Arthaya 
Sambhavami Yuge Yuge. Go ahead, please. Ashutoshji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Paritranaya sadhu nam, vinasaya chaduskritam, dharma sanstapunarthaya, sambhavami yuge yuge. Wonderful Ashutoshji, your vocal cords cooperated much more than mine for sure. So, thank you. All right, let's take the word. What it is. Simaji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Simaji. Paritranaya sadhu nam vinashaya chadushkritam dharma samsthapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge. Very nice, Simaji. Looks like you practice it day in and day out. Just got it spot on. Not right. Sandhya ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Paritranaya sadhu munam vinashaya chadishvitam dharma sansthapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge. Wonderful. Really nice, Sandhya. I got it really well. Entire meter for that matter. All right, let's. Sumesh ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe, Timji, Radhe Radhe, everyone. Radhe Radhe. Pranam sadhu nam, vinasaya chadushkritam, dharma sanstapa narthaya. Sambhavami Yuge Yuge Adhe Adhe. Very nice, very nice to meet you. Adhe Adhe. Thank you for turning on your camera by the way. So wonderful. Yeah, thank you everyone for turning your camera on. Rupa Ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Yeah, Radhe Radhe everyone. Radhe Rupa Ji. Paritrayana Sadhuna Vinashaya Chatushkritam Dharma Sampapanataya Sambhavami Yuge Yuge. Wonderful, Rupa Ji. All right, we can take a few more hands. Um, can you believe your luck? You know, you are reciting the same shloka that we used to watch. So one day we will be sitting on Zoom and reciting it. That itself is so such a big providence, right? All right, let's pick up a few more hands. Yes, Shamji, Radha Radha, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe Paritrada is a do now. Vida shyest Jedush Krita. That was at the top of our tire. Some have a be you gay, you gay. Radhe 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 Radhe, very nice. Uh, Shamji. Okay, Shamji. maybe two yeah. more hands and then we'll get started. Radhe Radhe Samji, please go ahead. Radhe 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 Paritranai Sadhu Nam Vinashai Chatush Kartam Dharm Sastap Narthai Sambhava Me Yuge Yuge Radhe Radhe Wonderful. Thank you so much, Samji. Okay, we'll pick up three more hands and then we'll get started. We are about to. Yeah, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. <laughs> Paritranai sadhunam Vinashaya cha dushkritam Dharma sansatha panathare Sambhavami yuge yuge. Wonderful. Very nice. Two more, and then we will get started. Yes. Uh, Surendraji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Prabhu. Radhe Radhe Prabhu. Paritranai sadhunam. Vinashai Jadushkritam Dharma Sansthapnarthai Sambhavami Yuge Yuge. Wonderful. Last one. Yeah, last but not the least, Ragiji. Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Ragiji, you get the privilege because you turned on the camera. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Radhe Radhe. <coughs> Paritranae sadhunam 
विनाशाए च दुष्कृता धर्म संस्थापना संभवानी युगे युगे very nice pragi ji i see premraj ji he turned on his camera so let's quickly give mrinal ji and prem premraj ji a chance as well definitely yes thank you quickly i'll cover premraj ji radhe radhe please go ahead radhe 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 paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya cha duskritam dharma samstapana thaya sambhavami yuge yuge wonderful very nice Minal ji, good to see you. Yes, Minal ji, Radhe Radhe. Please. Radhe Radhe. Thank you, Premraj ji. Pallavi ji, Paritranaya sadhu nam, Vinashaya chadushkrutam, Dharma samsthapana arthaya, Sambhavami yuge yuge. Very nice, Minal ji. Very melodious. looks like prem yoga has really helped you train your vocal cords as well wonderful all right venkat ji we will make an exception for you so let's quickly do that and then we'll get started remaining will will have to hold off radhe radhe sir radhe 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 thank you so much sir so, paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya cha duskrutam dharma samsthapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge wonderful thank you so much venkat ji so let's get started then um so paritranaay so paritranaay means to protect sadhunam the righteous vinashaay to annihilate ch and duskritam the wicked dharma the eternal religion sansthapanarthaya to re establish sambhavami i appear yuge yuge means age after age so we are in the age of kali god is going to appear in the age of kali as well all right so the short translation for this shloka goes like to protect the righteous to annihilate the wicked and to re establish the principles of dharma he is saying principles of dharma is not saying opinions of dharma we all have opinions opinion is a function of how we understand things what we think is good or bad it becomes subjective Prin- principle means it's universal it is timeless and it stands as it is it doesn't change whether we believe in it or not so opinions come in plenty principles are fixed so any time when we come across something and somebody says no by the way i don't think so or i think this is right that is fine but then we have to go uh, whether it's an opinion personal opinion or is it a principle and more often than not we are uh, we come across with our opinions as if something as if it is a principle and that is where the problem happens and on the contrary even god when he is telling a principle humbly he is saying as per my opinion that is the difference between us and god we state our opinions like a principle because we believe so our ego thinks it is right god gives us the principles by humility a lot of humility sayings as per my opinion so very wonderful way anyways so principles of dharma so dharma is what we are going to focus on today let's get into it the concept of uh, dharma itself uh, now when god takes avatars god is called satya sankalpa satya sankalpa means once he desires something it happens right for us to do something we have to first make a desire and then we have to have an intent we need to have the raw material we need to have the skill we need to translate into action so many things god desires and it happens he doesn't have to go through the grind of putting it into action and working towards it and then continuing with it no it doesn't have to in fact we also have that ability of satya sankalpa to some extent when we think there is a quotation in english if you think you can or if you think you cannot in both the cases you are right why because it really depends on our sankalpa when we really put our mind to something and truly believe it's going to happen the entire universe will conspire to make it happen but our sankalpa is not strong we make a resolve and then we think oh maybe it will happen maybe it will not self doubts will start coming in 
and that is why that sankalpa never becomes satya sankalpa otherwise it has to happen right there was a movie also i don't remember the dialogue where if you desire something very strongly and you work towards it you'll get it anyways so that is how it works but god is satya sankalpa he doesn't have to first think then plan then act and then realize realize visualize actualize that is what happens with humans with gods he desires and it happens okay he simply looks at prakriti and prakriti unfolds into mahan mahan folds into tanmatra tanmatra panch mahabhut every existent comes into being that is why god is called satya sankal and now if god is satya sankal does he really have to take the grind of descending down doing the you know going through the forest taking all the hardships fighting in in the process even um you know lying down when when he was uh, meghnath actually tired them in parsh then right they became unconscious all that drama does he really have to do that we'll discuss that topic in detail and the second aspect that we are going to spend more time on today is what are the lessons we can learn from these great personalities which are beneficial for our devotion okay. these are some of the examples uh, that we can derive inspiration from or learn from how it can assist on the path to our devotion do's and don'ts or things that we need to watch out for so let's get started starting with the dharma aspect of it what is swadharma right swadharma is swadharma basically one's duty as an individual in accordance with the vedas this has two aspects to it the apara dharma which is called so you'll have to keep that in mind because we'll come back to this the apara dharma is the material duties or the mundane duties that we do anyways as a father as a child as a uh, spouse uh, as a as an employee all the stuff that comes in the the apara dharma the duties that are incumbent upon us so this i would say i would treat it like a hygiene factor to justify our existence on this earth if you don't even do that we are actually not only incurring karmic debts but also not pulling in our weight in this giant wheel we have to like in a manufacturing industry every part of the machinery has to work in unison to produce the products similarly this is the bare minimum we are all supposed to do to justify our existence just because of the fact we have gotten this human body and this opportunity now this apara dharma is basically if you look at the scriptures it has 1 lakh 1 lakh is about 1/10 of a million uh, shlokas in it and out of that 80000 talk about apara dharma do's and don'ts vidhis and nishedhs in our scriptures the reason for that is the majority is that because majority of human kind does not possess spiritual perspective for whatever reasons it doesn't become a priority for us maybe we will go through a maslow hierarchy uh in one of our sessions maybe on tuesday session where when do you start getting spiritual sparks you know when certain parameters are taken care of and that to an extent we control as well anyway so the majority of human kind does not possess this perspective or they do not have a motivation to do that or they don't have that spark so then what do we do do the next best thing is at least do the bare minimum that is needed as part of getting this human body so these duties prescribed duties which we have to do as part of the body is what and what constitutes majority of our scriptures as well apara dharma aspect of it as a wife as a husband as a son all the do's and don'ts around it and these duties are defined according to one's ashram station in life right we have a brahmacharya then we have a grihastha stage and then finally sanyas and all that stuff that we talked about so it really depends on one station and it's a function of a lot of factors in life as well the other aspect of it is a higher dharma which is called para dharma the spiritual duty because if we truly look at it our identity is not that of a body saying that i have a soul is actually not a correct way of understanding our ourselves we are a soul we have a body is the right way of understanding it so if we truly look at our identity the dharma for you know our soul or us which is us um is the higher dharma is that of considering oneself to be the soul first of all get that realization and then the prescribed duty is to love and serve god with devotion there is no higher duty than that 
if you serve, if you do this duty, other duties automatically fall underneath it. It's like watering the root. The rest is automatically taken care of. Automatically taken care of. But this comes at a very advanced stage. You cannot absolve your duties and say, hey, now I'm just going to do Kirtan, Bhajan and everything else can take a backseat. No. Till the time we are there, till the time we get a call of God, it's like when God calls your number, you will, you will be like fish out of water, like Buddha. You will then all these arguments, no, I have to take care of this person, that person, it's my duty will evaporate. But God doesn't call anybody just like that. Okay, yes. Is he dials very specific numbers and that number when it will come then all the duties will subside then you will not worry about chunnu munnu and everybody that okay this duty that duty because we have already touched until we have reached there we have to do the duties properly proficiently and with a sense of responsibility as a service to god once we have perfected these duties then obviously we'll get a call from god and we will be obliged to pick up his phone and then nothing will matter at that point Right? It's call of God, it is said, it is the strongest. It doesn't come to everybody. We are still hung up in world and we keep on justifying in our intellect. No, 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 it's because of this. I cannot do that. And that is fine. We are not yet there and we have to handle it responsibly. But this is considered higher duty. So this is a quick uh, synopsis of the duties when we talk about dharma. Obviously, a lot of gray areas around it. It's not easy to understand that. It's a very loaded term. But at a broader level, at least we have gotten an understanding what are the different kind of dharmas there. For as long as we are dealing with the duality, where we think ourselves is a body, by the way, we know we are soul to, we need to continue to perfect our duties and continue to do it to the best of our abilities with a consciousness that we are doing it for the pleasure of God. So that is the best we can do. All right, now let's get into some of the characters here. We'll start with Bhishma. Now Bhishma is a very, very interesting character I, uh, in uh, Mahabharata. Now, he's one of the 12 Mahajans. Now, Mahajans uh, uh, is uh, also one of the surnames in India. This Mahajans is coming from scriptures. I have a friend, Amit Mahajan as well. So this is coming from scriptures. What these 12 Mahajans are, they are enumerated amongst the 12 great personalities in Bhagavatam. So it's 6320. Who are these? Let's look at it. They are the great knowers of religious principles. So, who are these? Brahma, starting with Brahma, Sage Narad, Lord Shiv, four Kumars, Bhagwan Kapil, who is the son of, son of Devahuti, Manu, Prahlad Maharaj, Janak Maharaj, Bhishma is also there if you look at it, Bali Maharaj, Shukadev Muni and Vedvyas. They are all called Mahajans. Now, if Bhishma Pitama was one of the great uh, Mahajans in our scriptures, how could he end up on the side of Adharma, taking side of Duryodhan? Is a question that's kind of a, a little paradoxical. I'd ask this question to Swamiji. So, he told me that it is said that, you know, one of the few people who truly understand who Krishna was, was Bhishma as well. And it was his seva, it was his way of telling the world that. You know, it is said that Bhishma Pratigya, they are like Dagichi's uh, daan or sacrifices known. Dagichi was a rishi who gave his bones just so that a vajra could be made out of it to kill the demons. There's a big story around it. I'm not getting into that. So Bhishma's Pratigya is, you know, well spoken about. Now Bhishma, it was his way to glorify Lord Krishna. That look, even a guy like Bhishma, who had the boon of leaving his life years on his own volition and who was invincible when armored. Still the side which had Lord Krishna, which had decided and who had decided not to lift a weapon, that side won just because God was on that side. So that was his way of serving God. In fact, he was one of the biggest devotees of Lord Krishna. I'll tell you with an example now. He's one of the big Rasik saints. Uh, there he used to meditate upon the form of Lord Krishna. Which form? The form where Lord Krishna would come back after grazing cows and the foot dust from the hooves of the cow would fall on his face. And that complexion, you know, that he was dark blue in color. So it would look like a grayish color and a bit red because, you know, when cheeks become red, when we exert ourselves, we would have seen kids even ourselves when we go to gym sparingly. 
so that form he would meditate upon and uh, and that is the form it is said that when he was on his chhaya for 6 months he continued meditating upon now what lord krishna did to him so let's look at it in the battlefield when bhishma took that pratigya right duryodhan told that you are doing favoritism and you are not fighting to your potential and these are your favorite uh, pandavas and you are not doing that then he he took a resolve that on that particular day of the war that before the next sunset either he will kill arjun or he he will make lord krishna break his vow so he said aju aju jo hari hin na shastra gahau taju laja hu ganga janani ko shantanu sut na kahau that if i do not uh, make lord krishna lift weapon then i am not the son of ganga and shantanu okay that is the pratigya he took and what does lord does that day so now what god does that day is to keep the vow of bhishma because bhishma pratigya that was his usp he would never break a vow bhishma pratigya even today we talk about it so he was fighting valiantly and arjun's arjun was pretty much at his mercy that day bhishma was invincible at okay that much he had been and when uh, lord krishna what does he do actually he lifts the wheel of the chariot and rushes towards bhishma that i'm going to kill you okay and he shows that anger and he shows the form and then what happens bhishma he just gives a smile because his purpose is served he knows his destiny he knows that the side of kaurava is going to lose but his purpose of making the lord break his vow which lord does was served and you know which form he showed him then he showed him the same form because it was a battlefield the dust was falling on lord krishna's face and then he he turned red with anger so he showed him the same form that he used to meditate upon so that is how god blesses his devotees he will take upon himself to break his vow but he will make sure the devotee's vow is not broken and that is why he tells arjun in bhagavad gita as well that arjun declare boldly that my devotee will never fall down he could have said it himself but why did he make arjun say that because he knows he can break his vow for the sake of his devotee but he will make sure he will never break his devotee's vow and that's exactly what he did and this form once he sees saw that he he it is said that on 6 months he kept on meditating on that enchanting form of lord krishna that he showed him even on the battlefield because he understood he is my devotee and that's what he needs at that point so this is bhishma this is something we can learn from him okay uh, i see a hand raised yes samji real quick is there a question yeah please can hear because yeah, we are no just got very very small doubt um did bishma see krishna when he was in vrindavan i mean how did he meditate that when he was returning after grazing cows how did he know that because see, i i never heard in bhagavatam or that's why yeah so these people had the see we need uh, we need technology these day to see each other on zoom and stuff like that even sanjay for that matter how would he be able to recite what is happening on the battlefield they were great saints and all they could they had good kind of mystic abilities and understanding to actually visualize that and then it's documented in scriptures just so that people like us can benefit from it but they had powers like people even the great scientists that we had previously they did not have the technology or the laboratories they would simply download the knowledge so they did have those kind of abilities and in fact it okay. is said bhishma knew when krishna showed his cosmic form even to duryodhan he was the one, probably one one person and then i think kripachare maybe i don't know they were able to understand who he is in fact they knew it already so that was his okay. way of serving the lord to glorify him that so see even bhishma could not tilt the scales in favor of kauravas just because god was on the other side who said that i am not lift the weapon that was his way of doing that we can continue with this discussion later let's mm-hmm. continue so that we have a bit of yes kumar ji real quick if you had something yes kumar ji <coughs> radhe radhe nitin ji i was thinking how smart of uh, bishma and uh, krishna's partnership here because he said i'll make him raise the weapon not fight right yeah. because yeah. if he said that 
then that would break Krishna's vow too. Very so well, what a great partnership. Great kind partnership. of amazed me. Wonderful point. Yeah. We'll come back to it. Let's continue with that. In fact, sometimes I think, uh, maybe I should ask that to Swamiji. I think did Arjun did a favor to Bhishma or actually not do a favor to Bhishma? Because if let's say somebody gets killed by God's hand, it's actually a big mercy. He gets Golo. Right? That's a God's rules. So maybe, but it was not preordained at that time. So why did he stop him? He should have let Krishna kill him. But anyways, that's a little sidetrack conversation. Now let's talk about Yudhishthir. Yudhishthir, he was very much attached to his dharma of not saying a lie. In fact, he was the only person out of the Pandavas who could go in Manavdeh to Swarg. That's not allowed. It's like you don't get a visa in human body to celestial abode. And he was the only person who could go, go there. One by one, all the Pandavas fell. You know, when they, they had ruled Hastinapur for about 36 years, they said, okay, now it's time for one prast and we have explored a lot of forest already as part of our Agyatva. So let's go to some mountain. And then the Draupadi fell, right? And one by one, everybody started falling and Yudhishthir did not even look back. That much dispassionate he was about this whole scenario, right? He said, let Panchali, you know, uh, this guy Bhima asked that, what did Panchali? She suffered for most part of her life. Uh, and uh, she's, she went through so many of miseries. You, you know, why did she have to die? And he said, no, she, that's fine. He said, but she, um, she actually was committed to, um, you know, loving all her husbands equally, but she always had a special attention for Arjun. She couldn't do that. Plus the fact that uh, she had that feeling of vengeance as well. Anyway, for each one of them, he said Nakul was vain. You know, he used to, he, he was like the best looking guy around that time. So he used to be very vain about his that. Sahadev, you know, he, his wisdom was there. He could actually foretell a lot of things, but he kept quiet when they were about to lose in that dude. Bhim was a glutton. In fact, Bhim, I said that uh, he, you know, he started enjoying others' misery as well to derive pleasure out of it. So that's why when Bhim went and when Arjun also went down, he said that, okay, this guy who always was, you know, trying to prove himself as the best archer even though he possibly was or was not, nobody would ever come to know because Eklavve, his thumb was taken away. Karan never got a fair chance against him. But he was the only person who got a chance. But the moment he saw the Kaurava sitting there, that, that seeds we spoke about, they flared up. He said, how come they are here and my, my own brother, brothers and my wife is not there? They were the cause of our misery. And he was told that they died an honorable death on the field. So like Lord Krishna told Arjun, when you die on a battlefield, you reach celestial abode because they fought the war as a matter of duty and they, they, they had a death of a warrior. So that's why they are in the Swarg Loka. Regardless, Swarg Loka is a temporary pit stop. After Swarg Loka, they will go to the next Loka where uh, in material realm, it's possibly Narak to, you know, to get the results of their sins. And then he was taken to Narak where the, all the Pandavas were there. And he said, you know, after this, they will come back. So they will probably swap positions and all that stuff. And then, but he, he it was made to understand. Indra told him that you have still not overcome your hatred for your Kauravas. You know, that seeds have to be burnt. And when they were, then they came back to Swarga. Anyway, that's a story. But the point is, he was so attached to his dharma that uh, he did not even uh, say things uh, what Krishna had asked him to do at that point. Now, the quick question here is, was he attached to Swadharma, which we understand, which is a good thing. We all have to. But was it a Paradharma or a Paradharma? Which was his higher duty? Following the dictate of super soul, when he knows he's a god, or following the dictate of his own ego or mind, which is a Paradharma at the bodily level, is a question to be thought about. Here again, right? we think we need to our intellect is able to conceive what is better for us and dharma, but we will not get the benefit of God coming in front of us and telling us. But let's suppose it happens. Then, obviously, there, there hasn't, need not be any second thoughts, but it has to be God, obviously. It cannot be somebody where we start doing war, like a lot of terrorists also do go ahead and kill people, understanding that, thinking that this is God's will. That's not the case. So anyway, it was a paradharma that he, he was following at that point. The third one, let's look at Karan. This is a very interesting character. We lot of we all have sympathy for Karan. In fact, he, he will invoke a lot of sympathy. Poor guy, what so many bad things happened to him, which was right. In fact, it did happen. So when he was actually changing his wheel of his chariot, Krishna said, Krishna said, Arjun, shoot him. And Karan, 
current means you know this year his ears were very strong even a whisper he could hear so in on the midst of that battlefield he could hear krishna saying that and he says krishna you are god you know what kind of a dharma it is that you are telling you know that i am a kshatriya i am fighting a war fair and square and now i am actually changing the chariot wheel you are telling arjun to kill me what kind of dharma is that so krishna smiled he said karan what you are talking about dharma where did your dharma go when uh, pandavas you know what happened when pandavas were robbed of their kingdom through deceit or when they were the plan was put together to burn them alive or when uh, you know that terrible thing was happening to draupadi or you know, the rules of engagement were not followed when abhimanyu was killed now you are talking about dharma so god has a perfect algorithm now some of the things we may see in the same life some of the things may see in a different life but god the god he is he controls which prar which part of our dharma has to be um, balanced out at what opportune moment anyways there might be a lot more context to it but then krishna basically tell told him that you know there's no point for you to talk about dharma at this stage and secondly if you look at karan the question here is we also fall into the trap of competing with people he competed with arjun he wanted to prove a point it was very unfortunate that possibly he had better skills than arjun but he never got a fair chance to fight him and when he was fighting him you know what was happening when they were fighting when uh, arjun was moving because of his arrows karan's uh, chariot would move a little bit so krishna would just look at it and when karan was moving um, arjun's chariot even a little bit krishna was clapping you know he was saying wow kind of a thing he was acknowledging that arjun was like okay i am moving karan's chariot much more than he's able to move mine why are you so hung gung ho about his he said first of all your chariot you have hanuman ji sitting on your flag secondly i am your charioteer still he is able to move that so just imagine how strong he is so what he is doing basically krishna was also acknowledging that but the problem with karan throughout in that was that he was competing with arjun so rather than pursuit of excellence like we all fall prey to that right we start competing with somebody we start getting envious we start getting competitive which is good but if our focus is on pers- pursuit of excellence in what we do it is much better mindset to have because now you are just competing with your yourself like a lone mountaineer so but for karana it was all about proving that he's the best archer in the world if uh, the charioteer he was so you know um, upset with the fact that as a sut putra he never got a proper opportunity uh, it was not merit based then he could have made you know that as part of his uh, endeavors as well to uplift that but he was more hung up on competing with arjun and proving that he's a more worthy warrior than him so that was another part of it as well and last but not the least let's go to draupadi draupadi let's look at it she was also she was one of the panchakanyas by the way and the panchakanyas are the five iconic ladies of hindu epics ahalya draupadi kunti tara and mandudri and these panchakanyas they were pretty strong i mean they they are referred to revered in our scriptures draupadi was one of them and uh, she had a lot of power of her own when dushasan was trying to pull her sari she had a lot of her own strength as well which she tried she was not immediately surrendered to god uh, but then when her strength failed as well that's when she called upon god and completely surrendered after exhausting all of her options you know looking at her husbands looking at the court uh, the elders somebody would say when nobody could then he called up krishna and immediately he intervened but then with draupadi she was also operating out of vengeance to begin with she did not tie up her hair for 15 years she said i'll do it only after you know the Ar- duryodhan's leg is broken and the shasan is killed i mean it, those are very gory details i'll not get into that so she also had her own set of secret stash with regards to her imperfections there as well but the point is but she did still had an ability to surrender to god in her moment of peril right that means she was at a certain level we we just getting to that situation Uh, regardless of what situation we are in it takes a lot so she was there all right any questions on this or any topic before we get into a bit of a discussion on the shloka itself on rather this reasons for god dissension and we'll get deeper into that there before is a that, question 
Yes. I wanted to quickly announce of International Women Day that starts yes. tomorrow, and Swamiji's keynote address is going to be there as well. So do watch out for that. There's a link for that, Pandaviji. You may want to talk a little bit about it before we go further. Yes. And then we can uh, take a question and then move forward. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I can quickly take a moment to make the announcement for tomorrow. There is a very very special occasion. Uh, tomorrow is a grand inauguration. Uh, of JK Yoga International Women's Day Conference, uh, which is starting from tomorrow. The key highlight is a special address by um, Swamiji. That will be the keynote, uh, keynote address by Swamiji at 8 p.m. CST, March 5th, that is tomorrow. And then a special address by United States Senator Tammy Duckworth. And this is going to be tomorrow, uh, March 5th, um, Saturday, 8 p.m. CST. And that will be Sunday, March 6th, 7.30 a.m. IST. Please do not forget, it, it is live event, free event. And this is a great event, which is going to talk, talk about forging gender equality in 21st century, which is, um, which is going to be Special talk by Padmasri, Padmasri Dr. Rohini Godbole, French National Order of Merit recipient. So there are a lot of lot of exciting events, lot of a uh, lot of uh, great speakers. So please do not forget, and please do uh, join this event. It is going to be really a gala event. I'm going to share the link right away. And the next, yeah, the next quick announcement is about uh, the parenting class. Um, just let me uh, share that as well. So I'm going to share the Women's Day link shortly. And the other one is about the parenting. Please do not forget, I'm going to share the timings for that. March 14, 16, 21st, 23rd. So there are four day workshop series, which are going to be uh, aimed at collective exploration. Uh, and please uh, do register. The highlights are about parenting know-how, tools, techniques, real world case studies, and there are specially prepared implementation workbook. So please do register. I'm going to share the uh, registration link in the chat window uh, shortly. Wonderful. So yeah, do check it out. Wonderful events. A lot of work has gone in for International Women Day and a very, uh, you know, great speakers. They have been lined up for this session. So do check it out and uh, join our live link um, and also the parenting class that's coming up. It's a good, good way to perfect your Apara Dharma under the Swadharma part of it. So good way to, uh, you know, reinforce those concepts around parenting, especially. Okay, so with that, let's get down to the reasons for God dissension. He has given us three reasons here to establish dharma. The second one is to annihilate the wicked. And the third one he's given is to protect the righteous. These are the three ones that he has given. Okay, so that is what how we relate this shloka to. Now let's do a bit of a question and then uh, we'll get deeper into it next week. But let's take it to establish dharma. Now, dharma is essentially described in the Vedas. God can re-establish it through a saint. Why to take on the trouble? Does he really have to descend to establish dharma? He can have a, he can act through an avesha avatar, like, you know, act through a soul. It can happen that as well. He doesn't have to descend for it in his personal form, just for the sake of establishing dharma. The second one is to kill the wicked. I mean, his God is all powerful. We just said he's a satya sankal. He doesn't have to come down and grow up and then get trained in arrow bows and arrows and uh, do all that stuff. He simply desires and it happens. He's a super soul. He's the basis of our lives. So if he decides to just move out, the soul has no existence of, on, a, on its own. Does he really have to take an avatar to accomplish this? Just think about it. And the third one is to protect the righteous. Now, God is seated in the hearts of his devotees. He, he can he always protect them. He can inspire them and pretty much do whatever he wants because he's seated within. Is there a need to take an avatar for this purpose? 
so you can keep mulling over it because uh, this is this actually goes deeper into this verse and if you have been exposed to this verse these are the three things you would always have thought about it but we'll go deeper into this concept with that we will open it up uh, the deeper message we will discuss next week because avatar is actually taken for a much bigger purpose not for this um chota mota things i would say because he can accomplish it just by desiring he doesn't have to go through that entire process of whole nine yards of growing up and taking birth and everything okay any questions so far what we have discussed or thoughts on this one and let's yes. open it up for a bit of a discussion since we have a little bit of time nitin ji there are a couple of questions in the chat sure so is it okay if i take a couple of yeah yeah sure let's so anusha ji is asking or uh, radhe radhe when god descends on earth from time to time to reestablish dharma then why should god dissolve the certain uh, dissolve the creation at the end of kalyu he can keep descending to fix things instead of dissolving his creation so oh, that's a very valid question and then why only 432000 for kalyu why not double double of it right um why dwapar is two times and three times and four times yeah I man it's an interesting question so some questions would probably make sense only once we become god realize i don't have an answer for it i can ask swami ji for that maybe it's it's just like a machine it just needs a, a cool down after a while and that is how he is he orchestrates it from time to time it needs a restructuring cool down something we must have something in mind so to understand god's mind we have to become god realized I mean, scriptures don't explain. We have not, at least, I have not come across any plausible explanation around why God does that or why He has a certain age for a particular thing. Maybe there is some explanation somewhere, but at least I haven't come across. But I see Ashutosh Ji has an answer for that. So let's hear from Ashutosh Ji and Jyoti Ji. They can probably explain better than. So let's hear from them on this one. Yes, Jyoti Ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe Pallavi ji and Nitin ji, um, my limited understanding of this concept is that God's main purpose is to um, show the leelas and to delight the devotees. And to this day, what happened five thousand years ago, or uh, or even before, we still live on, uh, on those leelas. We still delight from these. Um, uh, uh things that bhagwan ji does and from his uh, appearance to the day that he disappeared from this universe we still talk about it so yes the things that he does while he is here it is almost like you go into the shopping mall and you uh, uh on the way out you think about did i get milk or not did i forget to get milk so that is the kind of thing where as a side effect he he takes care of the miscreants but to answer the question that has been asked uh he can uh, uh dis destroy the universe or he can destroy the evil it is his choice but he puts this construct about the time in order to teach us in order to have that that uh it is like uh even in school we have the pe time or we have the science class we have math class we have a structure that is built and in uh, god's creation everything has a structure everything has to follow the the a rule and and uh, and everything has its own dharma that is my limited understanding Radhe Radhe. Very nice, uh, Jyoti. Always good to hear from you. Beautiful points, and you have touched upon it already. And we'll go really deeper into it next week. But beautiful points. Yes, God's uh, dissension has a much bigger purpose than what is visible to the eye, as He is, you know, putting it in this shloka. And those are the ones that we will discuss. Go really deep into next week. But beautiful points. Thank you so much for that. so one more quick question is about uh, sandhya ji has asked this is regarding panch kanyas what is the basis why not sita mata or radha ji so oh, they are the actual they are the shakti of god himself they are much beyond panch kanyas they were possibly jeevatmas who were special in some way sita mata radha ya parvati they are actually the shakti of god himself so they are swansh they are these are vibhinanch uh, maybe you missed that part of a session but i'll probably come back to that again um, so when jeevatma 
becomes very special because of their meritorious deeds or spiritual um, uh, assets that they build over time that those are the ones who are called out separately but sita maya radha they are in a different league altogether they are god himself god shakti or shakti and shakti man that kind of a relationship they have they are much higher they are god himself actually there is no difference between ram and sita there is no difference between radha and krishna it's a relationship like milk and whiteness you can't separate them so they are at a much higher level for sure beautifully explained thank you thank you nandan ji so uh, i just want to remind everyone the feedback tracker has been posted in the chat window please take a moment to uh, fill up your feedback comments questions or point for discussion mm -hmm. and we'll uh, go ahead with the uh, discussion i see ashutosh ji is hand yes ashutosh ji yeah. see krishna Please was fighting with chanur you would have seen that it was a very nice fight does he really have to do that so okay anyway you are were you going to answer the kali question why god dis dissolves everything from time to time no actually i had a question for two before two days so can i ask that actually i didn't get chance that day no worries please i, oh, yeah. I may not have an answer but i'll try to but please go ahead i regarding that day in suppose means we have to do uh, niskam is everything we do as a god is do or not us for that to be niskam karma suppose whatever we are doing in some part we are doing like that ki everything god is doing but sometimes we forget or we may not be able to do that so in that that portion of karma will be niskam karma or everything will come as a kam karma no when we are doing things for our own self not doing it with a spirit of as a service to god they are all sakam karma niskam is it's all for you for your pleasure sakam is when it is for my pleasure and the is a test for that is when we get upset or we get happy right when somebody praises us we get happy if somebody abuses us we get upset when things go as per our plans we get happy when things don't go as per our plan or we don't get the results that we are looking for we get upset that means all of that was sakam nishkam is when you do it for the pleasure of god and do it to the best of your ability and you are you have risen above the results and the outcome in your mind it's a very data streak and nishkam means you you have no attachment whatsoever to the outcome that becomes nishkam otherwise it's a binding karma it could it will either have a punya effect or a pap effect depending upon what that karma is and punya and pap if you think deeply are both binding because punya will give you swarg lok celestial abodes which is temporary pap will give you narak lok which is also temporary so punya and pap are both pap maharaj ji says pap and punya both are pap because both are binding so when you do gunadit when you are actually attaching it to service of god it's like i keep on giving the same example of mother teresa if you are helping the leapers like somebody asked them how can you uh, you know get yourself to help these despicable people you can't even you don't even feel like touching them so she said i do it as a service um, to jesus i'm actually serving jesus through them so when you you are helping somebody but you are thinking at the back of your mind i'm actually serving god or god's you know basically god's sons and i'm a i'm mere instrument uh, in the service of lord then it is gunatit but if you are thinking i'm doing it i'm helping somebody you are taking pity on somebody that becomes a good deed noble deed it is satva it will give you swarg not nishkam at that point see what i'm saying there's a difference in the little bit of tweaking in our intention makes the whole difference and if my doubt is that suppose 50% of time we are doing means for god's pleasure and remaining times we do means our own happen though what will be the means 50% will be nishkam 50% will be sakam like that or everything yeah, so will nishkam one one leg will be in golok and other will be in indralok okay so i don't know <laughs> i think it's binary zero or one god is very demanding and he's a perfectionist okay god says exclusive he used that satat yukta naam maam ekam sharanam he's saying exclusive devotion he's not saying okay by the way i have my chunnu munnu my wife my kid my girlfriend that movie that actor and then god is also there no he said no that will not work you just have to make me the top priority and the only priority so he's a very he's a perfectionist that's what he's asking for and then when that happens that's it so yes 50% that means you are at least make it from 50 to 60 and then 70 and then 80 then 90 
because we don't want to be operating in sattva alone. That is again binding because it's even more dangerous in the sense that when you are a human, you can make deposits. But when you are in um, celestial abodes, you can only enjoy the merit that you have accrued. You cannot really make any deposits. So you exhaust it and again you... So think if Indra becomes an ant, how bad it is or if it becomes a pig, how bad it is. So higher you rise, harder you fall. So it's better to stay focused and start building those sanskars. Sanskars is the mindset. That will help us in long run, regardless of which yoni or wherever, whenever we come back as humans, if not, if you don't do it in this life. So it's better to make those sanskars, mindsets. That is why there's a lot of emphasis on mind, intellect and stuff like that, because that is something which is our companion across lifetime. So however we mold it now, it will be our companion forever. So if we continue to be lazy, if we cannot do certain things, those tendencies will continue to persist with us. It's not like after death, everything will get reset. No, the mind will still be the same. You will repeat with the same mind, same tendencies. So we have to increase the proportion over time. Yes. Right, thank you. Yeah. So I, I hope I question. confused you really well for at least <laughs> next couple of sessions. You'll not ask me any questions. So all right, let's move on. Yeah, Jyoti ji, do you have to answer uh, this question, what the discussion was going on? Please go ahead with that. Yeah, I, I wanted to answer Ashutosh ji, if I may. Uh, in in Srimad Bhagavatam, there is the story of King Nrika. And what happens is that uh, um, Krishna's, uh, yeah, the Yadavas find, uh, uh, they, their ball goes into a well. And they go to the well and they try to take out the ball and uh, Sri Krishna comes to help the boys get the ball out. And at that point, uh, they find a lizard in the well and they pull the lizard out and it's a big lizard. And they ask the lizard, uh, Sri Krishna asks uh, the lizard, who are you? And it turns into a devta and it turns out to be King Riga. And he tells his past story that he was a very, very uh, a righteous king. He did a lot of charity, but he gave away a cow uh, that belonged to another Brahmin. And so when he dies, uh, he actually tried to atone for that sin by giving uh, another uh, a thousand cows in return to the same Brahmin and uh, laden with jewelry and all, but the, but the Brahmin uh, doesn't accept it. So when he dies, uh, the, he has to face his uh, uh, actions and they ask him, do you want to face the goodness that you did or the one sin that you did? And so in, in spirituality, in Hinduism, we believe that you cannot get away from your sins by doing uh, like negatives and positives don't uh, cancel each other out. You have to face your uh, actions. And uh, that is what King Riga had to do. And he decided to face his sins before he took his uh, uh, punya. And so he became a lizard. He came into contact with Lord Krishna and that turned into a blessing for him uh, in, in turn. But to answer Ashutoshji's questions, um, the consciousness that we have matters and you can never get away from your past actions. You have to face your good karma and your bad karma. Radhe Radhe. Beautiful story, Jyotiji. Very, very nicely illustrates the point around this concept. So thank you so much. All right. Do we have any new participants? I would really encourage uh, all of you to come forward. Mm -hmm. It's good to hear new voices as well. Let's take who else is there. Yeah. Turn on your camera. I don't see any new names uh, today. Okay. No, let's let's yeah. that. other participants. You can call up. Yeah, Seema Ji, please go ahead. Thank you for waiting. Thank you. Thank you. I'm one of the old names. Consistent oh, ones. Consistent ones, actually. So it's, it's a good way of looking at it. Consistent. So what? I didn't catch it. I was laughing. What? What did you say? The consistent ones. Consistent ones. Okay. Thank you. Um, the Kalio question. Um, see if I can remember what it was. Okay. Uh, I'll share my screen. Yeah. Yes, please. Thank you. Mm. Oh, the last one. There's no need to take an altar for this purpose. 
uh, I think um, when, as as you as we can see, uh, as far as since um, the um, Satya Yuga, the the amount of uh, evil being conducted in the world has been increasing. And to date, it has increased even much more since Krishna Avatar. So this is just my assessment. There's no cause and effect relationship, right? Because of uh -huh. Krishna Avatar, in spite of Krishna Avatar. That, that's up to the listener. My assessment is as the evil increases more and more, instead of taking altars and just rectifying just a little bit here and there, yep. he might as well dissolve the whole uh, world universe and begin all over again. And um, that's what happens in our human laws. True. Uh, we cannot, if there's small crime, there's small punishment, but when the, uh, the person is released from prison and they commit bigger and better crimes, the punishment it gets even worse. So that's my logic. Anyway, thank you. Great, Great point, Seema Ji. Yeah. It's just like uh, we can only do so much of patchwork. I think it's a cyclical process and it the creation comes to a point where you just need it to be a fresh restart. It's like yeah, right? if you have cancer in your body, there's, a, there's only a certain point until which you can revive it. And then it just needs a restart. And probably that's what happens at the end of the Kali Yuga. It really becomes bad and that just happens. We can see the trends, right? Our properties and how we are, a human greed keeps on taking the center stage and how we are deforestation and shrinking the agricultural land and all those trends, you can see that. And those trends and will the current war. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The current war almost threatening to be a third one, third world yeah. war. So those kind of things, yeah, I think it happens. It's a cyclical process and um, that's why uh, it just needs a reset or, re or a refresh from time to time. Great point. Thank you, Seema Ji. Let's take up a few other hands quickly. And I know we have here over time, so maybe we can spend another five, six minutes real quick. Yes. Sri Ji, Rade Rade, please go ahead. Rate Rade, Nitin Ji, Rate Rade, Pallavi Ji. So for the question where there was one question asked, like why God is not descending every cycle, but only towards the end of the yuga? Uh, probably uh, my analogy would be like, you know, if we compare with the current world, right? Like if there is a company for any problem, a CEO will not come and solve the problem, right? We have the managers to solve like that. So based on the magnitude of the problem, like if the company itself is in a shaky, that time the CEO would address so similarly, the earth is also like a company, right? And when there are small problems, we have saints who would correct us uh, and, uh, and so on. Like the good people, saints would uh, help us. So oh. when the whole earth is in shaky in terms of dharma, then that time the God will come up because he's the CEO of the earth. Yes, beautiful point. So yeah. Hands-on. It's like a hands-on job God takes on at that point. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> CU is willing to do the coding now. Great. Thank you. Great analogy. Thank you, Shriji. Uh, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Anapurna ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Uh, okay. Did, did you unmute, unmute me? Yes, Anapurna. We can hear oh, you. We can hear. No, I, 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 I just wanted to ask, uh, is uh, Sandeepini... Uh, the thing that you were saying yesterday, is it same as uh, yoga, you know, uh, that one, yoga maya, are they both same? You know, from yesterday you were saying, Sachit Anand. Sandeep, like, not Sandeepani, Sandeepani. Uh, yeah, Sandeep, uh, Sandeep, yeah, Sandeepani is a sage, I think, uh, yeah. Sandeep, 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 Sandeep. Is it same as yoga maya? It's part of Yoga Maya Shakti, Sandhini Shakti. It, it, Yoga Maya Shakti, Sarupa, it's also called Sarupa Shakti, it's also called Parashakti. And that Sarupa Shakti has three aspects to it. The Sat part comes from the Sandhini Shakti. So yes, it's under the Yoga Maya power only. Very true. Okay. I just, uh, you know, because I was just looking at it yesterday, I thought maybe I should remember to ask today. Yes, yes, yes. It's under Yoga Maya only. 
Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank that you. enables God to take on a form, basically. Yeah, that's what I have written down, you know. Yeah. Very good. Thank, Very good. You. Thank you, Anupurna Ji. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, there's a question, Nitin Ji, uh, about from, uh, I see Lord Shiv in Mahajans, but he is Parmeshwar by himself, right? While Lord Shiva is still be to be considered as Mahajans, then no. Devi Parvati is not in Panchkanyas. No, that's a very valid Narayan question. Ji wants to clarify this. Be very valid question. I can, in fact, Lord Shiva had said that I think if you go through that chart, whole chart, so he's Nitya Siddh aspect of it, Nitya Siddh soul. And it's also considered, he's not only Mahajan, but also considered, okay? Our scriptures, there might be some reasons to include him for that, but he's also considered, but he's a Nitya Siddh. He's not like an ordinary soul like us for sure. He's a Nitya Siddh. And uh, uh, basically, God's, it, it's like God himself, you can say. Avatar of God also is considered, but he's also considered as Mahajan. So yeah, and Mother Parvati is not because um, I don't know why she's not considered, but typically, in, and if you look at those, they were the souls, but not the actual Shaktis of God. So yeah, scriptures have that, some criteria to do that, and that's why they include that. But the proper way to understand is not only this, but also this. He was categorized as a Mahajan as well. Okay. Yeah. There's a quick question about Tara also. Please let me know about Tara, one of the Panch Mangas. Tara, I have not, uh, I think she was uh, Bali's wife. Mandodri was Ravan's wife. Um, why she's included in Panchakanya, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to do a bit of a research around that. All I know is she's one of the Panchakanyas. Ahilya was there, Mandodri was mm -hmm. there, Ropadi and Kunti as well. Yeah. Thank you, Nathan Ji. Radhe Radhe Kumar Ji, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, what I would consider is compare the world to a building, right? So when you have some small cracks in the building, you have patch patchwork, you kind of try to repair it, right? But let's say after like 50 years or 100 years, it becomes so bad that you have to bring it down. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think God says, okay, you know what? I think that's the stage which the world has come to. Yeah. And I, I shudder to think if this is not what it is, how worse it can be, uh, you know, when it happens. True. I surely don't want to be there at the time. Yeah, there are multiple ways to think about it for sure. And I'm sure there's a pretty good logic and rational behind it. If we could see the entire cycle pan out in front of our eyes, we would probably say this is the most, the best perfect thing that, that should happen after every cycle. And God would have thought through it already, right? And there's a reason for everything that is happening for sure. So I, I think what it is, is like there are still some very good souls here. And I think God is giving some more time to, you know, yeah, uh, like know, for it to get worse. Yeah. Very true. Worse, I mean, we still have a long way to go for sure. Okay. I know we are pretty much over time. So real quick, we can take maybe one, one minute each and then wrap it up for the day. We'll do the closing prayers together again. Yes. This tracker has been posted. Please do fill it up. Mm -hmm. Radhi, Radhi. Yeah, please go ahead. So, can, is Nishkam, can Nishkam Karma be called uh, Bhakti Yoga? Because in Nishkam, we are not attached to the results, but um, we are still attached to the kind of work we want to do. Yeah, so Nishkam is, an, is a, a, basically it's part of Bhakti itself. Where you say Tat Sukh Sukhitvam, that is the punchline in Bhakti. Narad Bhakti Darshan, it says Tat Sukh Sukhitvam in your happiness lies my happiness. What is love? The true love is when you have a reason for love to get destroyed and still it doesn't get destroyed. So when you do it, Nishkam Karv means you are doing it for your pleasure, God, and I will never have any reason not to, uh, you know, to get upset with whatever results I get. So yes, in Bhakti, anything that says yoga means you have to attach it to God, whether it's Karam, whether it's Gyan, whether it's Bhakti. So yes, it has to be attached to God as for your pleasure and uh, you know, as a service to you. That is Nishkamta. And not even a trace of selfishness in it. Okay. Otherwise, it becomes a calm. Great. Real quick. How many? Two more hands. Real quick. We can, we can take. Yes. Yamji, Radhe Radhe. Please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Everybody. Okay. I have a question. I don't know how it is valid or not. See, as uh, 
Jyoti ji mentioned the Sri Bhagavatam about lizard story, Kigiti story. So as uh, we all, I would say, I am uh, this this uh, bulldog. We have committed numerous sins. We have no clue. And Kigiti knew one sin, and you knew that he will be facing the hell, whatever the different mode of life. Since we are in this world and we have committed various sins, various put papas, and still we are doing so, despite being on this spiritual journey. So, shall we continue doing the sins, or shall we continue doing the punyas? Because we have no clue where do we stand in after this life. On a lighter note, I do not know. Shall we still doing those those all things which are which are doing mundane lifestyle, or shall we? So, Go on to a spiritual path because the number of sins we have done so far is I do not know how many janmas or karmas will happen to undergo to all hmm. those things. But God is giving you a formula for that too. In 1866, God, Lord Krishna says, "When you perfectly surrender to me, sir, Pape Bhio, I am going to burn off all your sins. Otherwise, we will never be able to." So, good point, Shamji. Now, the thing is, we are happy. That's okay. देखा जाएगा and let's continue. Then that choice is always there. That is a default choice. But Krishna says, when you perfect your surrender, I am going to burn off your entire stockpile. So he's he's actually declaring it boldly in Bhagavad Gita for us. That is a huge mercy, and that is another path. So the both choices are there. Either we increase the proportion of our surrender so that we get closer to that goal, or default setting is anyway there. The life is going on, and we'll see whatever happens, and that continues anyways. Krishna is too heavy for all of us. I don't know. He is too heavy. Sometimes he says something. Sometimes he says different thing. No, it's no, difficult he... to digest him. No, what is the contradiction? We will resolve that. No, he is being very, very logical and rational around it. Okay, there is no contradictions there. So we will resolve that. Whatever comes to your mind, but he is giving you the formula. See, he is going with. I'll give you the first level message. First, first standard message. Okay, you need to do your duty. Then he says you need to do the buddhi yoga. You need to start cultivating divine knowledge and attaching your mind to God and offering the fruits to me. And then he says, okay, now you says all the duties and all can actually take a back seat. You simply surrender. So whichever message you can relate to, he is giving you everything in step by step manner. He is not saying different things. He is telling you the same thing. He is saying the eventual goal is this. Now whether you want to do this and this layer by layer, or you you want to crawl, you want to run. Or, or you want to take a flight? All choices are there with you. So, will we will graduate or stay in the same class? I don't know. We will graduate. Um, we, we all will graduate. Okay, with flying colors. So you have to have that. <laughs> you have to have that hope. It will happen. Okay, we will all become graduates one day. Ruti ji, Radhe Radhe. Last but not the least. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, 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 Nitin, how would you uh, describe uh, Swadharma? I mean, Paradharma and uh, uh, Aparadharma in uh, one line. How how would you explain it? In one line? Yeah. Briefly, so, to you know, stick. So our Swadharma is at a bodily level at at currently because we think of ourselves as a body. So when we think of ourselves as body, as a as a girl as a boy as a wife as a mother right as a friend that these all identities are related to our body so for as long as we consider continue to consider ourselves as this body you know our identification is all these relationships we have to perform our duties like a good daughter good mother all those duties are applicable to us depending upon which stage of life we are in if we are in brahmacharya we have to study when we are in household we have to raise kids properly all those dharmas are applicable to us but when we start growing spiritually we understand that higher dharma is for our soul our identity is not that of a body but we are actually soul so developing we still life. can't leave sorry sorry to cut you yeah, sure. we can't leave you um, can't leave nobody is asking yeah but Yeah, but we still can't uh, uh, leave the you know the um, can't leave. Yeah, you can leave only when call of God will come. But you can start practicing it. Like Karam Yoga is not asking you to leave the world. Karam Yoga is asking you mm-hmm. purify your consciousness. Why are you doing it? Am I doing it because I love mm-hmm. my baby and I want that person to be the best, or I want to do the job? I want to become the CEO of a company so that I can enjoy that vacation in Hawaii. 
Karamyog tells us, purify your intentions behind or the motivation behind your work. And as you keep progressing, mm-hmm. one day call of God will come. Nobody is asking you to leave the world. Krishna is saying, do karam, perfect karam yoga mm-hmm. first. And one day when your consciousness and intentions are purified behind your day-to-day work, you still do the same job, but your motivation changes. You look at people in a different perspective. You don't pick on a fight because you understand it's not good for my soul or I'm just doing a duty. I will not be attached to this thing. So the spirituality is all about purifying our intentions behind everything that we do. And one day when we start rising above this whole thing, call of God will come and then nothing will matter at that point. Okay, at that time you can be ready for karam sanyas. That stage will come later on. But for now, God is saying, just purify your intention. Just change the motivation for your work. Why are you doing it? If you're going to take care of your health, that's so that you can you know, uh, be healthy and serve God or be able to discharge your duty more effectively as opposed to falling down and somebody else has to do seva to you. So everything you can actually channelize and cleanse in your mind, that motivation starts becoming more towards how can I serve God better as opposed to how can I serve and enjoy myself better. That is what spirituality is all about. So nothing. That's Swadharma, right? That's Swadharma, right? That is Swadharma. So Paradharma and Aparadharma are both the... Um, like, um, you can, blend, you can blend both. It's not like mutually exclusive. You can blend both. So when you're doing karam yoga, actually, you're not only doing your aparadharma because you are discharging your duties towards your family, relatives, even at, at, at job. And at the for same yourself time, as well. Aparadharma and, is for yourself. Like whatever vow you hold, that's aparadharma, right? True. So the aparadharma is the duties that you are doing, right? So in the material body, you have to do all the duties, your day to day, you have to get up and all the duties that we have. But at the same time, you can blend it with Paradharma as well, because now you are doing for a bigger purpose. You understand that Karam Yoga is about thinking bigger purpose around that thing, as opposed to thinking it's just me, myself, and I'm doing it for my own satisfaction alone. And that's where you can blend both. It's not like one, both are mutually exclusive. Only after you have done this, you can do that. Both can go hand in hand, actually. Because you're like, uh, mm-hmm. uh, like uh, Pitama, Bhishma Pitama, he, uh, he, he, uh, you know, stuck to his own vow that I will side by my brothers uh, always. So when Draupadi was getting this robe, he followed aparadharma rather than paradharma, right? That was the sin he 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 called right did right. And similarly, Yudhishthir, aparadharma that I'll never lie, and karan, right? So they didn't follow paradharma. Aparadharma, right? Yeah. So simple rule is whenever there is a conflict of interest between aparadharma and paradharma, we cannot know it at this point. But whenever there is, the paradharma takes precedence because that is who you really are. It will not happen. For the better manner of the world. Like greater good. Greater good. Yeah. Because Thank soul, you. and every situation gives us an opportunity to uplift our soul. Every situation. Our day-to-day interaction with people. Right? Whenever we pick up a phone with somebody, whenever we interact with people around us, whenever we do our day-to-day work, every interaction gives us an opportunity to uplift our soul from where we are. If you think deeply about it. Or stay where mm-hmm. we are or go down from where we are. So you can actually, when you start applying spiritual principles, it's very practical. Your life is a laboratory, day-to-day laboratory for you. Thoughts. Yeah, even I've started thoughts. noticing that <laughs> about myself. <laughs> yeah, every thought that we bring to our head actually is uh, contributing to that as well. Do I choose to say, surf that thought? Or do I choose to pick up a higher thought to repel that thought? Everything is contributing towards that paradharma. It's not a very deeper concept. It's actually every movement we can practice. Anyway, these are deeper concepts. We'll keep on revising it and hopefully map it to some real life situations as well. So I know we are way, way, way over time. Um, I want Pallavi Ji to be reciting along with us and not sleeping. So let's do our closing prayers for today. Yeah, let me try unmuting everyone. They can do that, whoever wants to, I think, till I've gotten. Guy, unmuted everyone. <laughs>
Okay, thank you everybody. I pulled up this screen a little late, but I'll do it um, on time next time around. So, Radhe Radhe, thank you everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe, stay blessed, and I'll see you on Monday. We'll go deeper into the shloka and much more exciting stuff from our scriptures. So, look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you, Nitinji, for such a wonderful session. Thank you, everyone, for joining and have a such wonderful, warm participation. Have a very, very blessed day and have good night. Thank you. Thank you.